Turn your Bible to Proverbs chapter 3. Your King James Bible. Don't mess with the other ones. They're no good. They're garbage. That comes from the Vatican. Um, Proverbs chapter 3. Question. Are you a Proverbs chapter 3 Christian? You say, well, I've heard of Proverbs 31 woman, but what's this Proverbs chapter 3 Christian? Well, there are certain truths, and I'm dispensational, and you know, this is back in the Old Testament under the law and the whole deal. I understand that. But there are certain truths that will cross dispensational lines, and they're true for anybody. And um, there's some really great instruction in righteousness. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That's written to a Christian. So we can go back here and we can look at instruction in righteousness. And I'll tell you what, uh, we're going through the book of Proverbs right now in our family devotions, and there are some amazing... This is my favorite book of the Bible, is the book of Proverbs. I love this book. There's so many true things in it, so many great things that you will experience. Again, another one of the things that God will do for you as you grow older as a Christian is this isn't just an intellectual book, okay, that you just read it and say, oh, I've read it. You know, I've read uh, the classics and, and I've read uh, great works of literature and I've read the Bible and I've read that. No, you'll actually live this book, you know. You'll go through some kind of a situation and not even think about it, and all of a sudden you'll just be reading through a portion of Scripture, and it will come out, and it will spell out exactly what you went through. The same thing happened to you that just, and you'll just, wow, that's amazing. And you'll see it time and time and time again, and that will prove to you one thing that's very important. This is an eternal book. This isn't like other books. This isn't just some dead religious text that a bunch of men made up in the past. Um, the God of this book, the God that wrote this book and inspired this book, um, he's not limited by time. All right. Um, there's an old saying that goes like this. Uh, the King James Bible is the only book that has the author present every time you read it, if you're saved. <laughs> That's important. But let's start out here. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. Well, that's in the Old Testament. Yeah, but keep reading here. Think about this. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Uh, if you follow the word of God, are you going to have length of days, long life, and peace? Yes. Um, I say this thing a lot. Okay, and I'm going to repeat it yet again because I'm just going to keep drilling it into people's heads. There is not one sin condemned in this book that's good for you. God never told you, uh, hey, you need to stop eating well. Don't drink that water. Uh, don't bite, bathe your flesh. Don't get exercise. Lord says, uh, don't get drunk. What good is drunkenness? Not good for anybody. Um, don't get involved in sex perversion of any kind. Um, what good does that do for you? And the list goes on and on and on. Don't steal, don't kill, don't lie. None of that stuff is negative. And what, what, you know, if you follow the Word of God, if you keep those commands, you're not keeping them to, to be saved or merit salvation or whatever. No, no. You're just keeping them to, you know, as a, as a you know, you look at the commands of Scripture, and there's a lot more than ten commandments too in the New Testament. Uh, if you if you break it down and actually go through the different verses, there's commandments all through uh, you know, the Pauline epistles for Christians. Things that you're told to do, not suggestions. And if you do those things, you'll be happy. You'll have peace and long life. But uh, some of the people out there, it's, it just it always amazes me. It always blows my mind that they'll fight you on those things. You say, hey, you know, you need to, you really do need to turn from sin. The Bible says, and they say, I don't want to turn from these sins. I enjoy my sin. I want to be in this thing. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Verse 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Mercy and truth. Look at this. Verse 4. So shalt, thy, so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Does God want you to have truth? As a defining purpose of your life, you want to know the truth? You want to tell people the truth? Do you want to be told the truth? Is that something God would find favorable? Yeah. 
How about your reputation with people out there in the world? You're going to have people that think you're crazy. You're going to have people that think that you're, you know, cast out your name as evil and everything else, persecute you and whatever else. But uh, isn't it a good thing if you're also known for telling the truth? Well, that guy might be weird. That woman might be weird. But I'll tell you what, they'll tell you the truth. It hurts sometimes the way that they'll tell it. You know, that they, they don't sugarcoat anything, but they'll tell me the truth. I know I can go to so-and-so, and I know they'll tell me the truth. Uh, that's a good reputation to have out there with the lost world. I mean, do you really want to be around somebody that you know is going to be lying to you? Those relatives, and you go up to them and you say, um, so I heard you were in a car accident. Yes. Um, how was it? You know, are you, are you in pain at all? Oh, I'm not in any pain at all. The surgery went well. Everything was wonderful. I've never been happier. <laughs> and you're thinking, you're lying to me. <laughs> I mean, I, I have relatives like that, that, you know, there's just nothing ever goes wrong in life. And then you hear that they have anxiety problems and nervous breakdowns and things like that. But nothing's ever wrong, you know. Um, I don't want to talk to people like that. I'd rather be around somebody that you say, how are things going? Oh, truth be told, not very good. Um, I really have some problems that I'm going through right now. And, uh, you know, do you have a minute? I could, I'd like to tell you about them. Yeah. Tell me the truth. But here's some really good verses. Some key scriptures that you want to really make life verses, life goals. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Not part of it. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Hmm. What's the significance of that? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Keep your hand there and go to Romans chapter 10. I love going to Romans chapter 10. One of the easiest to understand, most wonderful, beautiful places of Scripture. Amazing. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. <laughs> unto salvation. <laughs> Not because of you got saved and now you confess. No, confession is made unto salvation. All right? But compare the two. See how you have things that are written aforetime or written for our learning, you know, Old Testament, leading into the New Testament there? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Can you get saved if you don't totally trust the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the blood that he shed on the cross? Can you get, get saved if you don't truly believe that with all your heart? Well, you know, yeah, I, I kind of believe it. I think it happened. I've, I'm reasonably sure. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, 100%. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. I prayed a prayer. I believed. You see? You're trusting in the Lord with all your heart. It's a totally different situation. But a lot of these uh, false converts out there, they don't trust in the Lord with all their heart. And how do you know? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. In all thy ways acknowledge Him. In all thy ways? You mean to tell me that there's nothing that you're going to hold back from the Lord? You're going to give up your life to Him? He purchases you with His blood? Purchase possession. Bond servant of Jesus Christ. Take my yoke upon you. You put a yoke around the neck of a slave. And then He says, do this, don't do that. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Go back to Africa, and here comes the slave train. Tied here, yoke there, chained to the next one. And up there is the master, the slave driver, whatever you call him. And he's walking along. What's he doing? He's directing the paths of the slaves, the bond servants back there that are yoked together. 
Is that you, Christian? Lord, I don't trust these hands anymore. I'm a sinner. These hands have done nothing but get me into trouble. Can you please bind my hands, Lord? Can you please direct my hands? Lord, can you please direct my thoughts? Can you please direct my footsteps? I don't want to go to the bars. I don't want to go to the adult bookstores. I don't want to go to the drugs, the little drug dealer there on the corner. I don't want to go there anymore. Chain me up. Tell me what to do. You choose my life, Lord. Is that you? Oh, well, no, I just, you know, I kind of made a, I just kind of believe that he died for me and, and I just do what I want with my life. Uh, how are you enjoying your life? You like to dabble with sin a little bit there, do you? It's enjoyable. You don't want to quite give up some of that stuff. Hmm. Verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Intellectual salvation. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Well, that's back under the law. That's back in the Old Testament. We don't have to depart from evil anymore. Really? Back in the Old Testament when they're not in the body of Christ, part of his body, bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh, connected with Jesus Christ. They, didn't, they, they had to depart from evil back then, but we don't have to today. How do you figure? It's messed up. What do you have? A lot of people that are wise in their own eyes look at themselves in the mirror and they say, you sure are a bright individual, aren't you? Well, you, you deserve that degree that you got. Boy, I'm uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Verse 8. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Marrow is very good, by the way. We won't go off on a big nutritional rant here, but, you know, health. Big part of your health is the marrow in your bones. All right. Um, there's a whole lot more I could say, but, you know. Don't you want to be in good health? No, it's okay. I'd rather be a professing Christian and in poor health because of my sin and my mind failing me because of wickedness and whatever else. But I'm saved. I'm a saved Christian. Yeah. Okay. Verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Do you honor the Lord like that? Hmm. Another convicting thing. Well, what do you do when you are giving to the Lord? Okay. And that doesn't mean you send 10% of your tithe to your local church or to this ministry or to some other ministry or whatever. No, it's, it's, it's talking about you giving back to the Lord. That can be your time. That can be your prayer life. You have other things to do, but uh, take some time out and pray for ministries. Give 10% of your day to a ministry. Hmm. <laughs> pray for them volunteer to help them or whatever else. So, you know, whatever you can do, do something for the Lord. And what happens as a result? Verse 10, So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. The Lord will bless you. I'm saying more about that in here, here in just a little bit. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11 and 12, quoted over in the book of Hebrews. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I can relate to this scripture now. Um, I have a son, and uh, I love him. It doesn't matter how bad he gets and how bad he gets punished and whatever else, I never stop loving that boy. But there's times he needs to be chastened. He needs to be corrected. He's doing some things that are rather dumb, all right? And I can't tell you how many times I have literally, I'm, I'm telling him and I'm saying, why would you do that? I can't believe you did this. You know, go tell your mom you're sorry. Go on in there. You're going to bed right now and, and whatever else. And 
as I'm saying that in my mind, the Lord's saying, you do the same things. Why do you keep messing with that? Why do you keep doing that? <laughs> you know, yeah. But uh, what kind of relationship would it be if the Lord never corrected me when I did wrong? Or you? No conviction of sin. No changed life. I'm saved. Now what, Lord? 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 Uh, hello? Are you there? The Lord says, oh, uh, um, yeah, yeah. I'll get back to you then. You just, you know, just do what you want there. Read the Bible. Pray to me. Whatever. I'll, you know. <laughs> uh, is that the kind of relationship with Jesus Christ that you want? Really? Um, that's not the kind of relationship my son wants with me. He wants uh, his dad to say, don't do that, son. Hey, come here. I want you to help me with this. Son, I have a job for you to do. I, son, no, you're not going to wear that. Hey, put that on. You're going to get sick if you don't. Eat that. You need to do... My son relies on me to direct his life. I rely on God to direct my life. And if you're saved, you do too. Verse 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. This is an important one to get right here. Okay, there's an occult view that basically says that the Holy Spirit is feminine and the Father is, of course, masculine. And so the best way to show worship is fornication. I kid you not. Um, this thing is out there. David Koresh was a big believer in this whole thing. They were a radical branch of the Seventh-day Adventist cult, the, the Branch Davidians down there and whatever else, Waco, Texas, many years ago, back in the 1990s, early 1990s. And I study that stuff in, in extensively. Um, weird, weird people. There's some mind control stuff going on there, but whatever. But the whole point is, this is the passage that he turned to to prove that the Holy Spirit is female. Let's keep reading. Verse 14. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Right there, that's what, where they'll get you, these people. They'll, they'll they even use the hexagram. The upward pointing triangle is male, lower pointing triangle is female. You put the two together, and it's the great act of God and goddess coming together. It's just witchcraft, paganism, it's, it's all it is. Okay, um, what's the context here? Verse 15, she is more precious. Right, you say, well, that's the Holy Spirit. No, you go up to verse 13, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Okay, it's talking about wisdom and understanding, and it refers to it as she. All right, it has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit of God. All right, <laughs> so don't fall for that one. But let's start or go back to, uh, or go to verse 16. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is every one that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. God takes care of the weather, by the way. Okay? Uh, I'm not saying the scientists and evil people out there aren't trying to manipulate the weather and whatever else, but God's still in control. All right, and, and again, remember, God creates evil as punishment to the lost world. So sometimes you get some wicked scientists and wicked rulers and whatever else, and they want to do some bad things. And the Lord looks at the country and says, well, okay, bad guy, go on in there. Those people have no use for me. They have no use for my word. Go ahead, have fun. And that's what's going on right now. All the scientists and all the evil people and whatever else. It's because of the wickedness of this country. And your country too, by the way. It's not just America. But uh, again, look at the passages there about verses 13 down through verse 20. And look at how important wisdom, understanding, knowledge, truth. We're supposed to have standards. It isn't just a thing of, you know, I profess to be a Christian and I can live just like the lost world out there. I want to know things. And don't, you know, don't get frustrated. You know, you'll, you'll see Christians that have been saved for many, many years and they're just, they got all this stuff figured out and they just know this and they know that and they seem to know so much more than you do. 
that you, since you've just gotten saved and you just think, man, I have so much catching up to do. Well, guess what? Um, nobody's ever going to arrive at absolute total understanding of all truth that exists. Right? Um, that's only when we get to see Jesus Christ because he is the truth. Um, but as you grow as a Christian, the, you'll be amazed at how much grace the Lord has for you. As a bond servant, he will have grace for you. You'll do some things that are just ridiculous and stupid. And the Lord will let you do those things for a long time. And then all of a sudden, he'll show you the truth. He'll bring something into your life, health problem or whatever else. And all of a sudden, you realize, I need to quit doing that. And the Lord will say, yeah, you, you do need to quit doing that. Well, why didn't you tell me about this way back when? Well, you weren't ready for it yet. Now you are. And, you know, sometimes you'll fight him on it. Sometimes you'll say, well, you know, a little bit of this won't hurt or a little, you know, and the Lord will say, oh, okay, it's a sanctification issue. It's not a salvation issue, but, you know, you need to get that stuff out of your life. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, you know. There's times my son's playing with toys and there's nothing wrong with playing with toys, but I'd like to have his help. Hey, son, could you please come here and help me? Dad, I'm playing with my Legos. I'm going to play with my Legos, Dad. Well, okay. I was going to take you outside and, you know, I was going to help you, you know, help me with working on a vehicle or whatever else. And about that time, I'll hear the little feet coming. Duh, 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 duh. Well, I, I can go outside? I want to go outside? Yeah, let's go outside. We're going to work on a vehicle? <laughs> Likes to work on vehicles. You know? Yeah. Our Heavenly Father is the same way. He wants to do th some things for you and He wants to show you some things. Some things that you're doing in your life that are hurting you. Some things that you need to get out of your life. The process of sanctification. The process of the new birth. Of becoming a new creature in Christ Jesus. You know what I mean? I mean, Christianity would be a worthless religion if there was no change after you get saved. I mean, it would be absolutely no different than anybody else, anything else. Oh, the difference is you, 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 you know, before you didn't go to church, now you go to church. And before you didn't have Sunday best, now you wear Sunday best. And before you didn't take communion, now you take communion. And before you didn't have, you know, you didn't usher it at your local church, now you do. Okay. Then you leave that when you get tired of it and you go to Buddhism. Now you have, before you didn't have to wear a robe, now you do wear a robe. And then before, you know, you didn't sit cross-legged and meditate, now you do. And, you know. Uh, that's just outward ordinances. That's just religion stuff. Um, the changes that matter are the changes in here. The changes to your life. The Lord starts to show you the truth. Uh, where are we at here? I'll just go to verse 21, I guess. Forgot my place there. <laughs> um, my son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely and thy foot shall not stumble. Huh. Not supposed to be a stumbling block. Interesting. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down and thy sleep shall be sweet. Huh. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. Oh, boy. Highlight that verse right there. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. You know, there's a whole lot of bad things that could be happening to our country soon. Um, this country is over $20 trillion in debt. You know, I mean, I think the unofficial number, I forget what the official number is or whatever else, but... Just debt, 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 debt. And they, they're talking about quantitative easing four or something like this without getting no whole deal about that. It just means that they're going to put print more money and put it in the economy to keep things from crashing. The American economy, economy needs to crash. They need to reset this economy. It's terrible. Um, people are drowning in debt in this country. I mean, there's, I'm going to be coming out with a video. I did a video many years ago on gold and silver and what the Bible has to say. And I've been wanting to redo that. I have had suggestions to redo that. And so I will be redoing that. And I'm going to be including a lot of this economic stuff because I'm studying it a lot right now. But the point is, 
there's some really troubling things. We've already had more retail store closings in 2019 than in all of the year 2018. Just a few short months of 2019. It's, you know, I heard one guy, one economist say it's, you know, retail store apocalypse this year. Um, we are heading into another major recession. Um, and uh, there's a whole lot more I'm going to be saying about that. But uh, neither of the des desolation of the wicked when it cometh. Um, is the economy falling apart going to be desolation of the wicked? Yeah. What about an electromagnetic pulse or some other kind of a grid down scenario or whatever or cyber hacking type of deal and they wipe out the power grid in this country? Hmm. You say, oh, oh brother, I'm starting to get afraid. Well, uh, don't be. Because if you're doing right, if you're living right, and you're allowing the Lord to show you things and lead you, you're not going to have to worry about it. The Lord will take care of you. But uh, I've seen a lot of Christians, and they'll get to dabbling around with the world, and they'll get to messing with things that they shouldn't be messing with, and they just kind of, the Lord's saying, stop doing that, child. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. And they don't stop. And then when bad things come, they're not ready. And then they get scared, and they mess, you know, that it's, life can become a real mess for you if you don't do what the Lord tells you to do. <clears throat> Verse 26, For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Oh, they got FEMA camps. They're going to put people in re-education camps, and they could, they could outlaw the Bible, and they could come along, along and confiscate the Bibles and everything else. Don't worry about it. I had this, you know, thinking about this. I one of you put this in the comments one time. You know, the thing of if they, what are, what are we going to do if they come to confiscate the Bibles and say, just keep some NIVs around and some ESVs or New, New American Standard versions. They, you know, they bang on the door, you know, like that. And they say, we're here for your Bibles. Bring out the NIV and the NASV and the ESV and say, here you go. <laughs> oh, man, I'm sure going to miss these things. You know, <laughs> there you go. They walk away, you know, okay. Get back to reading the King James Bible. <laughs> Verse 27, Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, Go and come again, and tomorrow I will give, when thou hast it by thee. Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. You know, we're supposed to live at peace as much as lieth in you. As, you know, if it be possible, <laughs> live at peace with all men. Um, you shouldn't be known to be just some kind of a jerk and whatever else. Uh, there's a sense in which you're supposed to have a good report of them that are without. That's what instructions for a bishop in 1 Timothy chapter 3. There's supposed to be some good things about you. And you say, well, how do I do that? Go back to having mercy and truth. It's very important. Verse 30, Strive not with a man without cause if he have done thee no harm. Yeah, also very important with some things that are coming to this country. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. For the froward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. You know, that's one of the most amazing things. Um, doesn't matter how hard you preach or how much you witness or whatever else, you're never going to be popular. It's just not going to happen. You're never going to have the majority of people agreeing with you. I mean, why on earth did Jesus Christ come to this earth and speak in parables? I mean, do you realize the, the things he could have done as God manifest in the flesh? I mean, here he is, Godhead, fullness of the Godhead dwelleth in him bodily, and he could have come and he could have just said, hey, you want to see some tricks? Watch this. Jews require a sign? I'll give you some signs. Um, over there, dinosaur, show up. <laughs> up comes a full, you know, brachiosaurus or some kind of huge big one or whatever. <laughs> there he is, brontosaurus, whatever. Um, yep, Okay. And, oh, you want to see technology? You, you people are interested in things? I'm going to show you something from the future. Here's a stealth bomber from the United States Air Force. And flies over and the people are... You realize what could, Jesus could have done? And yet, what did he do? Spoke in parables. Why? His secret is with the righteous. Hmm. Um, there's a lot of people out there that just don't understand the Bible. Uh, the vast majority of people. And uh, they don't want to understand the Bible. They don't want to change life. They don't want to be born again. 
Do you ever feel like you're living in secret? <laughs> you know? I don't mean that you're hiding the fact that you're a Christian or whatever else, but it just, you, you look sometimes and you think, how can't these people understand this? I mean, I, this is weird. They can't see where the world's going. They can't understand this health stuff. I'm looking at the people in front of me in the checkout line at the grocery store, and I'm thinking, I wouldn't give that stuff to my dog. You know, my word, you people, what are you eating this stuff for? Just junk. You know, and, and, and you know, they're, they're telling their child to calm down, and the child's screaming bloody murder, and they say, here, here's a blue raspberry lollipop. You know, and you think... <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. High fructose corn syrup, you know, coal tar dyes. Yeah, that's going to help the child calm down. And you're just thinking, don't you people get it? You know, what's going on? Um, his secret is with the righteous. The, the life that the Lord has given you, that amazing truth and understanding and wisdom and knowledge that he gives to a truly saved, born-again Christian. You know? And your life changes. You live for years and years and years eating junk food, fast food, candy. There was nothing. I mean, I, I literally ate myself to the point of, uh, ate myself to being sick, I should say. It doesn't really make sense. I'm not a cannibal. <laughs> I didn't eat myself. I'm saying I ate to the point of making myself sick. I got it that time. You know, did you ever do that? Some stupid things. Drinking soda pop, eating candy, junk food, all kinds of stuff. And you get to a point where you just look at yourself in the mirror sometime, you're so sick and you're just looking at this just pale and you're you're thinking, you say, God, I gotta quit doing this. Lord says, Yeah, I've been trying to tell you that for a while, you know. Um, how about we get your health fixed up? See how you feel. All right, I'm ready for it now, you know. And then your life changes. Now, all of a sudden, you feel so much better. I honestly feel better today as a 43-year-old man than I did back when I was in my 20s, when I was living on junk food, loved junk food. None of you out there can say that you, you know, had junk food on a level that I didn't have, okay? I was a junk food addict, all right? You name it, I was eating junk food. We don't want to get into all that stuff. But the whole point is, the Lord showed me some things, some truth. I acknowledge Him in all my ways. Not perfect. Okay? I make mistakes. But I'm trying to let the Lord come in and, and say, okay, hey, that needs to go, son. That needs to stop. This needs to end. Yeah. His secret is with the righteous. Not my own righteousness. His righteousness. I tried having my own righteousness all those years as a lost man. I was a professing Christian. I was good. You see? No, I was rotten. Let's continue. Uh, let's see where we're we at here. Verse 33. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked... But he blesseth the habitation of the just. Hmm. Triumphing of the wicked is but for a moment. The Bible says. Uh, God's curse is upon those people that are wicked. He'll take care of them. Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. You know, we're supposed to humble ourselves. The wise shall inherit glory. But shame shall be the promotion of fools. <laughs> I love that. That's why I like the book of Proverbs. There's just so many things that are, you know, every verse almost just so profound and just this statement of loan, you know, the wise shall inherit glory. If you're wise, you're going to look and you're going to say, um, you know what, I, I'm going to get saved. I'm going to be born again. More than anything else, I don't care about my relations. I don't care about my job. I don't care about my credentials or whatever. I don't care. I want to get saved. I want to be born again. I want to know that I'm going to go to heaven when I die. It's wise. And what are you going to do? You're going to inherit glory. Okay? The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. I'm going to be glorified one of these days. 
going to get rid of this old body of sinful flesh, this old body that I struggle with, and uh, I'm going to go to be with the Lord. I'm going to have the mind of Christ. I'm going to think like He thinks. You know, and, and at that point, it just cracks me up, these easy believes and whatever you call them, people. You know, I, I guess when I get there and I have the mind of Christ, finally I'm going to realize, oh, I just was too strict on sin down there on the earth. Boy, now that I have the mind of Christ, boy, I didn't realize that, that he had such a light attitude towards sin. You know, uh, no. I'm going to get up there and I'm going to say, wow, thou art holy, O Lord. But shame shall be the promotion of fools. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. I don't want to. I want to hold on to the things of this world. I want to do the things out there that I like. I'm not ready to give that stuff up. You're a fool. I like to do the partying thing. I like to party. Yeah, okay. We'll check back in another 20 years and see how your party lifestyle worked out. Oh, hey, man, I like a drink now and then. I like I get a little bit drunk, you know, now and then on the weekends, you know, happy hour, buddy. You know, okay, we'll check back in 30 years, 20 years, 10 years with alcohol. Hey, I like my, uh, my drugs. We'll check back in a few years and see how much uh, you've been promoted. See how much shame you have as you're in the hospital bed and they're saying, uh, sorry, uh, sir, you, you know, your liver is failing and your lungs are failing and you have cancer and you have this and you have that. What is that? Um, you've been promoted, fool. The sins that you could have had the Lord's help getting out of your life. You didn't want the Lord's help. I don't want truth. I don't want understanding. I don't want to be a bond servant of Jesus Christ. I want this life. I don't want that. I don't want to clean up things in my life. I'm just going to keep listening to lies and I'm going to seek for teachers that are going to tell me what my itching ears want to hear. There's no changed life that happens after salvation. Just believe. You can hang on to those sins. You know what you're going to have? Shame. Shame on you. You fools out there. You're a fool if you don't let this book clean you up when you get saved. Why do people waste their lives? That's something that I just don't understand. I know what the Bible says. I, you know, you quote scriptures and things, put it in the comments. I, I know why they do. But, you know, it, it's kind of the, one of them things that you struggle with, you know. Um, you know, Jesus marvels at their unbelief. Well, obviously he understands why they have unbelief, but he still marvels at it. You know, and I know what the Bible says about why people reject Jesus Christ, why people reject the, the new birth. Um, but... I know why, but I don't understand why. <laughs> you know what I'm saying if you're saved. You just you look and you just think, don't you get it? I mean, don't you understand people out there, my enemies out there? Don't you understand what I'm preaching? I'm not preaching lordship salvation. You have to do a bunch of things to, to keep yourself saved. I don't preach that. I'm telling you how you can have a better life. I'm telling you about the sins and mistakes of my past and how the Jesus Christ helped me to get the beam out of my eye so I can help you get the moat out of your eye. Don't you get it? You still don't get it, do you? Okay. Promotion of fools. Shame. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Just reading through that chapter there, chapter 3 of the book of Proverbs, and I just thought, wow, what an amazing, amazing chapter in the Word of God. And um, I thank the Lord for this book. How lost I'd be without that book. My word. <laughs> huh. 
And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're on the fence and you, you say, you know, I really don't know if, if I'm saved, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand these things and whatever else, um, you're on the right path here, okay? Um, there's nothing more important than you having your relationship with Jesus Christ figured out. There's nothing out there that's that important. Um, and when you are saved, all right, you're going to get saved and you're going to be a mess. New Christians are some of the biggest messes out there. I've sat down and talked to new Christians that are sitting there and they got women immodestly dressed and, you know, they, they're struggling with drinking alcohol or on pharmaceutical meds. They're on, they're sitting smoking a cigarette or whatever else where they tell me that they smoke cigarettes and they, they have, you know, divorces and bad relationships and bad this and bad that and all, all this stuff. And I just, I just give them the word of God and I say, hey, brother, sister, just get in the book and just do this and that. I'm not going to sit there and, and yell at them and judge them and whatever else. I went through a lot of that same stuff myself. But you people out there that fight the standards of Scripture, that fight sanctification and cleaning up your life and getting away from worldliness and whatever else, and I come and I say, okay, hey, the Lord helped me to get that beam out of my eye. Here, you got a mote in your eye. Can I help you? And you slap my hand away and you say, Denlinger's a false prophet. Denlinger's lost. He's on his way to hell. He's, he's, he's this, he's that, all this stuff. I don't get it. <laughs> I really don't get it. But that's just life. But it'll all work out one day. Um, one day we're all going to stand before Jesus Christ. And you can uh, bow the knee to him now or you can bow to him then. I choose to bow to my knee right now and say, Lord, what needs to go? I want wisdom. I want to have an abundant life. I don't want to be sick anymore like I used to be sick all the time. I don't want the migraine headaches from the sugar that I used to eat and the rotting of my teeth and whatever from the sugar and, and whatever else it was doing to my health and, and the, the foggy brain and whatever. I want to know. I want to know the truth in all aspects of my life. And if there's things that are evil and wicked in my life, help me to get them out of there. Help me to be able to discern those things. So I do hope that this has been a challenge to you. Because here's the thing. If you're saved, the Lord's going to convict you about some personal things that need to go. If He loves you, and He does if you're saved, um, He's going to chasten you. He's going to correct you. He bought you with His blood. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I do pray by the power of Thy Holy Spirit that You would go out there and touch the heart of every saved man and every saved woman out there and reveal to them, Lord, right now what is the thing that needs to go, whatever it is, Lord. Um, but I pray um, as fervently as I can, Lord, that uh, none of us would be content to just be a plateau Christian, just to reach a certain level and then just stay there and don't seek to have anything else change for the rest of our lives, Lord. I pray that you would convict all of us, and I include myself in that, Lord. Convict us that we need to trust in you with all of our heart and that you, we need to acknowledge you in all of our ways, in everything, Lord. Help us to get rid of this just wicked pride that says, no, I don't want to be told those things and, and whatever else, Lord. Help us to fight that. And Lord, there's some real scary times that could hit this world before we get caught up. And it's very uncertain right now. Lord, there's war, there's economic problems, there's uh, social unrest, there's disease, there's all kinds of horrible stuff, Lord. That's things that we can't even fathom. It's so vexing living in this world, Lord. And you know what is going on. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. You see more than we do, Lord. I can't imagine what you put up with. Your mercy and, and long-suffering, just patience, <laughs> unreal. But uh, it's easy, Lord, to start fear in the world. And I pray that uh, through the process of sanctification that's in your word, that you would help us to stop fearing the wor world and to put our trust in you and to fear you and to sanctify things out of our lives that are going to hurt us and cause our foot to stumble and that we would help one another, Lord, and pray for one another. I do ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
that's going to be it. I'm thinking a lot about a lot of these different things right now, and and um, just a little ministry update here. We're back to uh, nearly all the snow is melted. Yes, we actually do still have snow here. It gets down into the below freezing at night here in northern Maine. This is the last day of, of uh, April. Tomorrow is going to be May 1st. Beltane. <laughs> May Day, you know. Uh, Beltane is a high satanic holiday, whatever. But, you know, um, we still have snow. Um, a lot of you, it's still it's nice and warm and whatever else. It gets fairly warm during the day, but... Uh, the whole point is we're, we're getting back in the building again, getting some work done, and, and I just got back an hour or so ago, two hours or so actually. And um, so a lot of work to do. And um, so not sure how much I'm going to be doing over the next couple of weeks, even month or two. Um, so uh, we'll see. Uh, as far as videos and things like that. Um, unfortunately, there are some major big studies that, that I've been doing research for, and it's conflicting with building right now. And um, so I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of going through that, and I'm saying, you know, I really feel a push from the Lord to get this information out. I love the Lord. I love His, His Word. I love truth. And there's so much the Lord has shown us. And... I mean, we are sitting on just mountains of, of evidence and things and just the Lord's blessed us with things. I mean, some of the materials we get <laughs> is incredible, the stuff that we're sitting on and and uh, restructuring the ministry and everything else. I mean, it, it, the future is going to have some really wild revelations that are going to come out. Um, some of the stuff the Lord's shown us, I mean, just wow. But... I can't right now because the snow is finally gone. We're able to get some work done. Back to building time again. Um, you know, I mean, literally, you know, we've the five feet of snow uh, in some of the areas where I have to build. You can't even see the bottom parts of the buildings and whatever else. So that's all gone now for the most part, like I said. But uh, just do keep us in your prayers. I would really appreciate that. Um, there are days when I, I've said this many times, and it still goes on all the time. It hasn't ended. Um, there's days when I can feel there's just something in the air, just something just evil, just I don't know what's going on, and I'm thinking, what is going on? And all of a sudden, I'll feel that spirit start to lift, and I firmly believe it's because of Christians praying for us and praying for the ministry. Um, I was talking to my wife about this today, and I said, you know, I've been on in ministry full-time for 12 years now that's a long time you know, to to come out and and be in ministry and do the kind of controversial stuff i've come out with and whatever else um it's a long time and uh i've poured my heart and soul into it and i've i've made mistakes i've not been perfect and uh so thank you to all out there everybody that, that prays for us that supports us and keeps us going um so, I guess that's it. Just wanted to say that just, you know, please do pray for us as, as I'm trying to balance the two here of, of working. And, you know, when we get things built, then it's going to be that's over now. And I can focus more on more detailed videos coming out in the future. Um, there's a lot of book reviews I need to do. A whole lot of book reviews. And I'm trying to get through some of that stuff as I can. Um, so, but that's going to be it. So uh, I guess we'll see you in the next video. And as always, thank you for watching.